Hey guys, it's Wednesday, so Doc here with my new comics that I picked up this week. We're going to start off with the stack that I picked up from Comics and Collectibles in Memphis, and then I also picked up a few books here from Frank at Nene's Comics, which is where I am filming right now. So uh, I have not had time to read my books this week, so I'm just going to go over and show you what I picked up, and then if there are any real bangers as I go and read through these books, then I will go ahead and do individual videos on those as we go along. So let me go ahead and get started, guys. Um, I picked up a facsimile copy of Green Lantern Green Arrow number 87. It's a Neil Adams cover. This is the introduction of John Stewart as a Green Lantern. So pretty key book as far as Green Lantern lore goes. Um, I can show you some of the artwork from the inside. It, you know, the colors pop, and then it's got all of the same ads and letter columns and everything that the original book had on it. So that makes for a pretty fun book in my opinion. All right. Next up, we've got another facsimile edition. We have X-Men 268 by Chris Claremont and Jim Lee. So this is kind of a precursor to the current Marvel series, uh, Wolverine Madripoor Knights. So I just always really liked this cover. And I never was a big X-Men fan. I didn't uh, collect the X-Men books in the 90s when I got started because Spider-Man had four books, X-Men had four or five books. I didn't have the kind of money at that time to collect all of them. But as I went along, now I've had the chance to start collecting some of the stuff that I missed back in the day. So that's another facsimile book, and it's got that wonderful Jim Lee art inside of there with the colors that really, really pop. And as I said on the other book, it's got all of the original ads that you would have seen when the book originally came out. So that's the second book. I also picked up World Tree, issue eight. And World Tree is continuing on from James Tenyon and Fernando, Fernando Blanco. Um, I've heard really good things about this particular issue, so hopefully it'll turn around because issues six and seven were kind of mm, middle, middle of the road. They didn't really excite me all that well, so I kind of thought about dropping the series, but I'm gonna give it all the way through issue 12 now, and we'll see what this one uh, makes me feel like when I get through with it. I also decided to keep on with Phantom Road because I heard the same thing. I heard that it really picks up and wraps up in this issue with the action, so, this is by Jeff Lemire and Gabriel Walta is the artist. And I just, I'll read this and give you guys a lowdown on it once I've picked through it. Okay. Conan the Barbarian is here also with issue number eight. And uh, this is written by Jim Zub with art by Doug Braithwaite. Let's see if there's any art that I can show you in here that would be, uh, Look at those colors, folks. Look at the look at the power in the imagery. I've always liked Doug Braithwaite. Uh, his pencils are detailed. They really bring out the story. His storytelling is second to none. And then Jim Zub has already shown that, that he loves the character of Conan and loves the stories um, that you can always tell with these characters that are in there. So it is action-packed and looks like it's just gonna be explosive. So I can't wait to read Conan number eight. And I actually have been collecting this one for my wife. Uh, it's Deep Cuts and it's an anthology series. It's not really anthology, but it's uh, different stories and different takes on musician and history of music and things like that. And this is issue five of six. This is called Los Angeles 1968 Seeking Secrets. And so it talks about different characters. Uh, looks like uh, Kyle Higgins is the writer on this and Joe Clark uh, is also co-writer and Junie Ba does the pencil and inks on this issue. So this one, let's see, this one has got, this one looks more like an independent book. Um, it's got that image flair to it that you're used to seeing from image that things are not going to look all the same kind of like Marvel and DC books do. But at the same time, you get some really interesting images, kind of like this. So hopefully this deep cuts. There's only one more issue after this to finish the miniseries off. So I'm really hoping that it finishes strong when the issue six comes out. 
okay? And they shorted my shop um, on the Cutter 8 for Amazing Spider-Man 44. So I ended up with the Marcos Martin cover. I thought that was really neat. Um, I enjoyed it more than the other covers. I did flip through this one. This is the finale of Gang War. Well, it's the finale in this uh, particular issue of Gang War. There's still one more part to Gang War, which is Daredevil Gang War, and I believe that's issue four, and that's got to come out. But as far as what I've been reading, I've just been reading the main series, and I really enjoy the John Romita Jr. artwork. I know that he's not for everybody, and I, I still say that some of his pencil line work is getting missed either by uh, the colorist or by Scott Hanna not picking up, you know, a heavy enough line. I'm not really sure what it is, but something muddies that artwork a little bit. But I'm still enjoying that. Looking forward to the March to issue 50, which comes out in May. Uh, it's got an ad for Edge of Spider-Verse. That's a pretty cool looking character. It looks like a variation on Iron Spider that came out back during Civil War back in the day. So... So far from what I've read of this particular issue, it does, uh, it's one of the best issues of this particular run. Now, I'm not really a fan of this run other than the artwork for the majority of the part, but it's a really strong character-driven issue. Okay, so that's everything that I picked up at Comics and Collectibles, and I did pick up a few books here from Frank, and actually they are all Spawn books. I picked up issue 13, issue 14, issue 25, issue 30, this one might be triggering so I'll just show it for just a moment and then move on. Issue 32, I really love the colors on these early Spawn books. That sunset is absolutely majestic. Also picked up issue 50. Issue 75 with a cover by Greg Capullo with inks by Todd McFarlane. And then I found issue 125 in a newsstand what I'm trying to do is I'm really trying to go back and collect the big anniversary issues. Um, I'm old school like that, so 25, 50, 75, 100, and everything like that are always uh, considered by my generation of collectors to be anniversary issues, and it's a big deal once they reach those marks. So I'm really happy that I got, uh, you know, the first 100 issues or so, minus issue 100. He didn't have that one, of the big issues of Spawn. And I've got the first 15 issues uh, straight now without missing an issue. So now I can start filling in the gaps from where that is. But like I said, I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to really go through and explain uh, what's going on in all the books and show you any artwork. But as I go through here and I get time, I will go through these books, I will read them, and then we'll do some individual videos so that you guys have some more content. Thanks for watching. I appreciate uh, each and every one of my subscribers. I'm up to 53 as of this morning, so train just keeps rolling and, and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and I appreciate each and every one of you guys. If you haven't hit that like and subscribe button yet, please do. I am trying to build this channel into something that everybody can enjoy and that, you know, Maybe one day it'll be something where I can get monetized if I get enough subscribers. And then we can start doing giveaways and things like that. So help me grow the channel and I will help you guys by providing this wonderful content that so far everybody seems to like. If you've got any suggestions, pop them in the comments section below. Uh, what did you pick up this week? What are you reading? What are you enjoying? And just let me know that down in the comments section. Thanks again, guys, and have a great day.